Shalom, Israel. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakhachdash. Double honors uh, to the elders and to the apostle Great Millstone. And enough respect to the brothers that are out there pushing and uh, spreading the gospel of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to the four corners of the world. Um, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, this is the, uh, a quick, you know, hopefully a quick lesson. Uh, no, and what's been going on uh, between these guys, okay? Let me highlight it. And uh, I'll try to the best of my ability to, to not say their names, Amalek's name. I'll, I'll just say Amalek. But, um, yeah, let's get right into it. And then, um, <laughs> um, so, I guess going off of this article, there's a previous article that went on with uh, a group called the, uh, the Houthis, the Houthis. Which is a uh, a milit uh, I guess uh, a militia group, okay, in the Middle East, which Americans will refer to them as terrorists, okay. So these terrorist groups are for recently they've been attacking uh, cargo ships, okay. They've been hijacking them, and uh, they're doing it in response. I, I, at least that's the um, that is the based off on the research or the investigations that they have done, but this is a response. The hijackings of cargo ships, they are a response to, you know, what Amalek is doing over there. Um, yeah. So now we're just gonna keep reading on this article. Okay, these updates, and then uh, everything is gonna tie in together. And then we're going to go through the scriptures, okay? Just a few of them. Primarily, uh, I wanted to go into uh, Isaiah, but we're going to get into it. And then pretty much. So this is, um, oh, what happened? So this is the the Amalek Hamas war live. So Israel, nah, whatever, man. Orders latest evacuation in uh, Khan Yunus after inc inconclusive tr uh, truce talks. So the... Uh, the 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 IH war, okay. Um, this is the latest attempt for a truce between the state of you know Israel and Hamas ended without results, right? Uh, in the Egyptian capital Cairo, where the Qatari and Egyptian mediators were hoping to achieve another humanitarian ceasefire <laughs> now you you think hey a ceasefire is good right it's, it's, it's a good thing but check this out it says the it, it says amalek's prime minister benjamin netanyahu ruled out a ceasefire on wednesday as he vowed that israel will continue its war against hamas to the end all right so what is that what's going to be the effect of this uh, it says Australia will join the U.S.-led Red Sea Force. Now, remember what I was talking about, the hijackings by these um, terrorist groups? Now, the 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 U.S. is they're sending their navies in that region, around that Red Sea, um, to, you know, secure um, trades, okay, trade routes, and the cargo ship itself. But they're not just doing it by themselves. They have multiple countries, right? Um, I don't know, but they have a lot from, uh, the NATO, um, coalition, a lot of these countries, you know, uh, including, uh, France, you know, UK and, uh, Australia, right? As we're reading here, but they have, it's Babylon, okay. America and the European nations. And they've all up until this point, they've all brought the, uh, you know, the, you know, military <laughs> in the Middle East, okay? So this is it right here in Jeremiah, the 49th chapter. We brought this up over and over again, but we're going to keep doing it because, you know, we're seeing it happening. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter... Let me see. Matter of fact, let me get it here. Let me see. Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 20. 
It says, Therefore hear the counsel of the Lord Yahweh, that he has taken against Edom, and his purposes, that he has purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. All right? Uh, and uh, it says, Shul, and, and just when you hear Edom, you, you're mostly going to hear Teman. The same way somebody uses the word Moscow for Russia or Washington for America. Okay? So the same thing. Um, it is the, uh, I guess, the, the operating center of you know the the people but it says surely the least of the flock which is of which flock the edom the edom flock and the least of the edom flock is amalek okay it says the least of the flock shall draw them out surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them okay so what you know we're gonna a bit more information on that is in Joel the third chapter all right. As a matter of fact, when you keep going, it says the earth is moved at the noise of their fall, which talks about the ICBMs. When they hit, it's going to be a devastating destruction. Right. The, the scripture talks about the earth shall um, to and fro, shall, 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 you know, move to and fro like a drunkard. Right. So there's going to be a lot of impact. The book of Revelations and the book of um, the second chapter in, jo in the book of Joel talks about how the, 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 the great earthquake. Okay. So it's going to be a devastating destruction of Esau's kingdom. But the beginning of this destruction will be when Amalek, okay, the least of the flock, when they do some outrageous shit as to what? As to incite World War III. And this could be it. This is what we're doing now, which it could not be it because World War III will not come to pass until their microchip, their RFID chip is what is uh, enforced. Okay, so... This could be it in a sense where they they're just gonna keep doing. They're just gonna drag out this war like they like they did with um America invading Iraq right for like since two thousand and one up until like the twenty twenties. They've been over so it could drag out to that point until the microchip is made mandatory, or they can end it and then start a new conflict. All right. So either way that comes up, it's it's gonna it, we we don't know in details, but definitely it's gonna be Amalek. Okay, which are. When I say Amalek, I mean these people. Okay, they're not the, the actual, you know, children of um of the Most High, as, as mentioned in the scriptures. But this is the, the, the these are the people that are calling them that are Amalek will be the people that are calling themselves the Israelites. All right, but um, so yeah, it says the earth is the earth is moved at the noise of their fall. At a cry, the noise thereof was heard in the uh, in the Red Sea. All right, um, so which he shall come up and fly as as the eagle, which is talking about Yahweh Shai. So when the um when the destruction is when Esau's kingdom was going on, when they're fighting against each other, then Yahweh Shai also come in <laughs> and add on to the uh, and add on to the evils that are being done in the earth, meaning the uh, you know the uh, the the. How do I put like the wars and the famines and the bombings and all these? So that alone is bad enough. That is devastating to Esau's kingdom. And then Yahweh Shai shall come and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra, hover it in that day. The heart of the mighty men of Edom, okay, which is their military, shall be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Right? So at that point, all that boasting that 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 Esau Edom does, they're gonna <laughs> Hey, the most is gonna make them into bitches, you know. It's like yeah, I didn't, you know, forgive my language, but yeah. Um, so this is Joel the third chapter. The least of the flock shall draw them out. Um. This is proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. This is Joel chapter three, starting from verse nine. It says, "Beat your plowshares into swords." And your pruning hooks into spears, like the weak say I'm strong. And what you've noticed is that a lot of these nations in the eastern part of the world, their economy, they, they like for Iran, for example, they have a very strong military. But when you actually look at the daily life of their citizens, it's, it's, it's piss poor. Like the, the citizens are not living good. And that the reason is what they have beat all their, their plowshares into sword. They have... Uh, um, directed all the funds all the taxes into making bombs okay fighter jets icbms that's what they do you look at russia for example i've spoken to a lot of russians okay a lot of you know people from ukraine 
all these all these guys who talks about how life was bad they can work for months right with an s without getting paid okay and but the company had but the not, I said the company but the country can afford you know billions of dollars for a nuclear submarine they're doing that because of prophecies they beat their plowshares into swords and their pruning hook into spears this isn't a time for people to be to be uh to be in a relaxation state this is a time for 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 the for the men of war to draw near okay for the time for people to be armed to the teeth it says let the weak say i am strong and a lot of these nations that if you reflected back 20 years ago 10 years ago they would be weak nations but now they have reformed their government they have ref they've reformed their their armies and they are strong you know so much so that the babylon if babylon was to say to if babylon wanted to invade uh, one of them right now they would have a hard time okay well doing it humanely but not a never a hard, very hard time with the icbms but you know um so it says assemble yourselves and come all ye heathens and gather yourself together round about and this is what we're seeing over there you know we're having the the this, the russian join the u.s led right that's what it says u.s led it doesn't just say the, australia will join the u.s that's because there's a lot of the nations that are already over there you know in the gulf of suez and, and all around that you know in the arabian peninsula around the red sea they're all over the place they've surrounded that place because a lot of people the val the violence goes beyond just these two you know so it says uh the australian defense minister richard uh, morrow said australia will send up to six additional uh, australia troops to contribute uh to the u.s-led prosperity guardian operations yeah there it is that that's the name of it let's just uh get it right now copy um Let me just get a. Um, so this the recent, yep, the recent escalation in reckless uh, Houthi um, attacks originating from Yemen threatens the free flow of commons and dangerous innocent marinas and violates international law. The Red Sea is a critical waterway that has been essential to freedom of navigation and a major commercial corridor that facilitates international trade. Countries that seek to uphold the uh, the foundational principles of freedom and navigation must come together to tackle the challenge posed by the non-state actor launching. And not it just means it's another way of calling someone a <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, a terrorist. Okay, a non-state actor launching ballistic missiles and unscrewed aerial um, and uncrewed aerial missiles at merchant vessels from many uh, nations lawfully tra uh, transiting international waters transiting in international waters okay um see it is an international challenge that demands collective action therefore today i am announcing the establishment of operational uh, prosperity guardian an international new multinational security initiative under the umbrella and combined maritime forces and the leaders of its task force um, 153, which focuses on security in the Red Sea. All right, there it is. Operation Prosperity Guardian is bringing together multiple countries to include the United Kingdom, <laughs> the Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, uh, I don't know what this can us. Uh, I don't, I don't want to butcher it, but uh, Seychelles and Spain to jointly address security challenges in the Southern Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden with the goal of ensuring freedom of navigation for all countries and bolstering regional security and prosperity. Now, these people, they don't, oh, why, am I, why, did I, why did I do that? But Babylon, they, don't, they ain't trying to tell these people to chill out. They will support them in whatever it is that they're doing. 
So what happens when, see, these people just said that they will carry this thing to the end. But what happens when carrying this thing to the end means the battle or the war lasts for 10 years? That means these people have to remain in that area. The more they remain in that area, the more there's friction, you know, because they do. You can't, like, it's like when somebody's fighting and you want to be around them, event eventually you're going to get caught up in a fight. You, you always... If somebody's throwing punches and you're right there in the vicinity, you're going to get caught in these punches. And when you get caught, you're going to try to retaliate. And now it's not just war between two people. It's war between three people. And and you may have your homie with you, and then it goes on, and then it just escalates. You see how things... It, yo, I, I, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that at this point, it shouldn't be difficult to explain to people pro like prophecies at all. Because everything is so apparent. It's right in front of you. This says the Australian government continues to work with the United States and other partners in supporting the international rule, rules based order in the Middle East and surrounding region. Um, UN accuses idea of soldiers of killing 11 Palestinians in front of their families. The UN says that it has disturbing information as it accused um, idea of, of killing um, 11 Palestinians uh, in front of their families. All right. Let's see. Yep. So this is the Israel Defense Forces. That's all they're going to do. They're just going to accuse him, but they're not going to do anything because the people that are in high places, they are from there. They they lobby, you know, they, they're lobbyists. They have all the politicians in their, in their pocket. And if you ever to, if you are ever to climb up to that, you know, seat of authority, you must pledge your allegiance to them. Because there has never been one actual, you know, uh, you know, U.S. president or um, what, what's it called? You know, uh, U.K. prime minister who has ever expressed an opinion differently than what we've been seeing. You know, like express a different opinion about, you know, the Amalek than all than, than, than the people be, before them. You know, so all they're going to do is just, they're just going to keep talking. They're not going to do shit. They're not going to do anything. And, and Amalek is just going to keep dragging it on. And as the scripture says, right, the least of the flocks are drawn about. So it says, assemble yourself and come, all you heathens, and gather yourself together round about. And tither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord Yahweh. Let the heathens be wakened, right, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I will sit to judge all the heathens round about okay <laughs> it says put ye in the sickle for the harvest is ripe come get you down for the press is full the fats overflow for their wickedness is great right and it's time for these heathens to be judged right <laughs> multitudes multitudes oh it's like a multitude in the valley of decision which is the valley of jehoshaphat for the day of the lord yahweh is near in the valley of decision Again, just like we read in Isaiah, the 49th chapter, the sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. That's when these missiles start flying off. There's going to be a great smoke, like, like a sacrifice. And the scriptures also make that analogy, you know, when you sacrifice it, it is a smoke that rises up and, 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 and it's pleasing to Yahweh Bashim Yashai. So the same thing, a great smoke. And it's going to be pleasing to Yahweh Bashim Yashai when all these wicked people are drenched in fire. And you know what's crazy too? Um, if you put in least of the flock, it, it mentions, all right, hold on. It mentions Edom in 49th chapter. And in the 50th verse, it mentions, uh, you know, Babylon, which is why we know that what. Um, this is why when we talk, well, you can't say the Edomites are done away with, because when you, when the scriptures talks uh, when when you, when you read about um, the scholars' view on Jeremiah's prophecies on Babylon being a desolate, they will tell you it's a few. They'll tell you that's that's a future. Uh, it's a future prophecy. The scholars will tell you this because they'll say, well, because Babylon wasn't 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 taken down violently. It was um, it was taken down. Um, and it was actually a peaceful, relatively peaceful transition. They will tell you that. But then w when it comes to the same 
Um, because I, I hope you're reading this on the screen. I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters that are watching. But when it comes to parallel scriptures like this, where the same thing that's mentioned of in Jeremiah 49 chapter about Edom is the same thing that's talked about in Babylon. So how the hell are the Edomites done away with if if Babylon <laughs> is receiving the same judgment as Esau Edom? You know, it, it, it's it, it's a comparison. The Edomites are the ones that are ruling the world right now. They are Babylon, which is the, the scripture talks about the, the whore that sitteth upon what many waters, many tongues, people, and nations. That's 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 the world superpower. It's, it's America. And who rules America? Esau Edom. So they're always going to try to be slick, but the, but the scriptures doesn't lie. Okay? They can, they can lie all they want, but it, it's going to be the truth. Will be it will be consistent throughout the entire scriptures. The hell is this, man? Um, so just another way of them, you know, drawing people out. They're just going to keep doing whatever they're doing. And when people realize that the UN don't do shit, they're going to take matters into their own hands. Because see, right now, the uh, what do you call it? the um, the Islamic coalition, like the nations, right now they're not trying to intervene on behalf of the Palestinians, because what happened, what the, the what what started this war was something that happened without their knowledge, without their permission. You know, they said you guys went off and did your own thing. Now you got to suffer the consequences. But if this thing keeps dragging on, and it reaches, it, it, it eventually is going to reach. You know. Like like the scripture says, it's gonna you know grow into monumentous proportions, and then in that moment, all we have to do is just look up the sky for Yahushai to to you know to come down, <laughs> not to bring peace, but to bring war. Yeah, not not to not to you know sing songs and hold hands and and skip around, but to make slaves of our enemies, and to vindicate Israel, and to deliver us. And to purge the land, right? And to set us in glory. So with that, I hope edification goes out. <laughs> uh, let's see if it's, you know, let, let me see. Right? It says that this is very recently. So Israel, or this latest uh, evacuation, right? So they're just going to keep expanding. <laughs> uh, it has some covenant at the center. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that, I hope edification goes out. Um, forgive me for jumping around, but I still hope that this was very edifying and that you were able to follow along. Um, you know, so through the spirit, I really hope brothers and sisters will edify. So, but before we end it, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakah And, uh, you know, peace and blessings, you know, to you, Akims and Aquas, that listening to the sincerity. May the blessing of relationship be upon our houses. Follow on.